I cannot believe I actually made this happen. We made this happen in the space of three months, guys. We managed to plan my kitchen party and we shut it down. Have you not seen the video though? <laughs> Have you not seen it? I watched it maybe a good few times and I still can't get over how special the day was, how everything came together. Of course there were some hiccups along the way. What event doesn't have its own hiccups and delays because I know we kept people waiting chair. <laughs> but for the most part everything came together and I was just so happy with how everything like was just put together and even though it doesn't look like it in the video, like I'm not supposed to smile. <laughs> I was so happy that day. <laughs> Especially when my husband came because I was like, where have you been? You needed to have been here. Um, but yeah, it was just an amazing special day. And yeah, I, I'm just so happy that I was able to share it with you guys. Thank you so much for all your comments or your love on the video as well. For today, I just wanted to be able to share with you guys the whole process, like planning it, looking at vendors, all that one-on-one -on -one of how to put a kitchen party together and I hope it will be helpful to somebody out there because Lord knows I felt like I needed a video on all of this and we kind of had to figure things out as we went along. So I kind of put together all the things that I kind of went through, what I learned, top tips, things to consider and all of that good stuff. So we'll get into it. All right guys, here we go. Hey guys, it's Chuma here, back with another video. And for today, it is all about the process of planning a kitchen party. Now, some of my non-Zambian people may be wondering what a kitchen party actually is. I, I know, right? So it's, first of all, not a party in a kitchen, okay? We're not part planning a party in a kitchen because some people have really been like, what's that all about? What do you guys do? Like, what is it really? What is it? Um, it's not that. <laughs> Essentially a kitchen party, a Zambian kitchen party, is a traditional bridal shower. So traditionally all the women in the village would come together, provide knowledge, guidance to the bride before she transitioned into um, becoming a wife and um, they would also gift her. So they would um, gift her things for her kitchen and that's essentially where the, um, the title of the event is came from it's a kitchen party so you're basically helping the bride prepare for her new home essentially that's the breakdown of it we've obviously modernized it commercialized it and now it's a big old hoo-ha because who doesn't love a party obs any excuse right when it's wedding season um so it is a lot bigger than what it used to be but we still have a lot of fun with it the the and essentially the fundamentals and the key concept is still there in terms of what a kitchen party is and um i've always wanted to have one it's always been something that i've always wanted to do some people well some zambians um some zambian women choose whether they want to have it or not i think you probably have more of a choice here <laughs> or in the kind of diaspora than you do in Zambia. I don't know, can anybody in Zambia let me know? Do you still have a choice as to whether you have one or not? Is it compulsory? Because I know like you have like the kitchen parties, you have the um, Chilanga Malelos and all of that kind of stuff. Like, is that something that you kind of have to do in Zambia? Whereas here it's kind of, if you can do it, do it. If you want to do it, do it. I didn't feel any pressure to feel like I needed. To. In fact, I was telling my family I want to do it like this is what we're doing <laughs> versus the other way around because everyone's just so chilled they're like mm, okay do what you want um so yeah i'm just so glad that i was able to do it and of course like my family was happy that i was able to do it anyway let's not get distracted planning a kitchen party what is that all about so the first thing that i would say when you're starting to plan a kitchen party is first think about who's going to be in your committee um so these are the people that are going to be able to help you these are the women should i say that are going to be able to help you with the process going to be able to help you um, on the day as well you can have one big committee of all the women that are close to you that will um that are happy to help and contribute towards the kitchen party or you can split into two committees and that's what i did so we had the senior committee that comprised of all of like my older sisters, uh, my older aunties, like their friends, like their, basically their age mates. 
<laughs> no shade, but A's mates. Uh, and then my um, junior committee was comprised of all of my girls who are, you know, the litty committee basically. Um, the girls that were going to be able to help on the day and stuff, but then also like bring the vibe, you know? And you saw it in the video, didn't it? Did they not do well? Like, they just cut up the dance floor. Did not have to say no more. You know what I mean? <laughs> So yeah, I would say just start putting together your committee. The earlier you do that, the better, because you need to give people time to prepare as well. Like the moment that you say that, oh, you want to be able to do a kitchen party, people need to be, at least have the idea or know, oh, this is coming up, this is going to, um, this is going to happen, because you also have to give people time to prepare from a financial perspective as well. There'll be things that they'll need to contribute to. So you kind of want to give them as much time as possible. Also, guys, my Zambians in Zambia, can you tell me, like, in terms of, like, the committees there, I've been hearing, like, things like people are, they set, like, a committee fee and, you know, you have to pay X amount to be in this committee and, you know, you're basically forced into or thrown into group chats to be in committees without even being asked and stuff like that. And it comes with, like, a membership fee. Like, I'm calling it that for lack of a better word. Like, you put something up front to contribute towards the kitchen party, whereas... We don't do that here. <laughs> I mean, already it's going to be a lot that they will be doing, like both committees, like the Chitenges, um, you know, that they'll have to pay for to get. So that you noticed in, in my video, the senior committee had the orange Chitenge and then the junior committee had the um, green and the blue. So I sourced the Chitenge, found like the pattern that I wanted to get. And then I told everybody how much it was going to be. Luckily with the Chitenge is it wasn't as expensive like you'll get some really expensive like material <laughs> Really expensive. And I didn't want to do that. I just wanted it to be like affordable for everybody So we'll talk like budgets and money in another like Q&A video. So um, We'll cover that but in terms of like what making it affordable for everybody I wanted to be able to do that because here in the UK you have to get the material you have to get the material sewn and here it's not cheap for tailors. Tailors charge you a ridiculous amount of money um, to get something sewn, especially last minute, because we left it late. <laughs> and so that's what I'm saying. Get your committee earlier so that you get the material earlier so people have more time to prepare. That's the one thing that I would say that's a tip um, to do because I feel like with us it was rushed. Like the senior committee, we're still sitting there all two weeks before the kitchen party talking about I may or may not have material or have something sewn and we were like auntie <laughs> two weeks you know auntie come on um so yeah something um to learn about so that's that's it get your committee together and then from the planning perspective again like it will be interesting to know the difference differences between like here and in zambia i imagine that in zambia you'll probably appoint somebody like an older cousin or an auntie or even your mum that will get involved to you know look at venues and plan the process for you so it kind of takes the weight off of you girl we ain't we, it's me myself and i that's all i got in the end <laughs> um, jokes aside though because obviously i had people help me but this is what I wanted. So where I wanted it, I had to make things happen because also if I relied on, oh, I'm waiting for you to do this for the big stuff, then it probably wouldn't have happened in September because, you know, people's timings, all of that kind of stuff. So I kind of put the bulk things that I wanted to be able to cover to do myself. So looking for venues, did that myself. Me and um, my husband and my best friend, went to the viewing for the venue that we ended up picking. Uh, so I did that. I assigned points of, this is your job, this is your job, this is what you're doing, this is what you're doing. Because otherwise people would be like, mm, what, what am I supposed to do? It's basically taught me to ask for help, like, and delegate. Because if I also did things all on my own, then it would have been too much. It would have been overwhelming. So there was a good balance of, this is what I want to do. This is what I envision, and this is what it looks like. How do we now execute it? Talk to this person that knows this person to find out what matron that we can use. Because that's another thing, like, looking for a matron that's something else to be able to cover, right? Finding a good matron that knows what they're doing, 
that can also bring their own entertainers, like their own drummers. So they usually do like a package deal here in the UK, like where you have the matron and she comes with her own drummers, usually like three drummers. But Annie is absolutely amazing. Annie Mukosha is, ha, this woman. Did you see her? Did you see her? Ah, oh, but Annie, ah, ha. She did such an amazing job, entertained the crowd, like she got the traditional stuff down, like she worked with us with the program, because that's another thing, like you'll have to go through the program and decide like the running order of the day. And you guys saw that we did things slightly differently because usually in a kitchen party as well, like the guys come in the middle of the kitchen party and then it then becomes like a party for the women like afterwards, after everything is done. But we kind of wanted to celebrate with everybody because we were having more of an intimate wedding. And so not everybody at the kitchen party was going to be invited at the wedding. And so we kind of wanted it to be a big kind of going into more of like a traditional Nigerian wedding at the end of just the party part <laughs> at the end of the evening. Um, and we had an amazing venue, so it's kind of like, why waste it with not having everybody come together? So that's why we had the men come right at the end, so then it can then break out into a party and then people's like spouses could be able to come and were invited, um, other men were invited um, towards the end of the evening as well, which worked out really, really um, great. Um, so I was really happy with the way it came out. So yeah, finding a matron is important, um, finding out their availability early and quickly quickly because they go they were like around the time that we were planning maybe three three or four my fingers can't finger three or four <laughs> kitchen parties happening at the same time everybody literally picked those months because they knew that it was going to be that around that time that you needed to do it and the best time to do it is like summertime going into like the autumn but not too late because it gets too dark too quickly it gets cold and stuff like that so yeah like all of that to think about when it came to the venue i really like again it's about affordability and where you can afford i really like the space in the king george i'd seen another kitchen party happen there before and then also thank goodness that they their old dance floor they got rid of so you could bring in your own dance floor because i didn't like that black and white boy <laughs> There's a pre there was a previous dance floor that was black and white and it was gonna clash and I was like, no ma'am. Um, so I'm glad that they switched it up. So found the venue okay. And the venue was in Newbury Park. So it was a Holiday Inn Express, which had like a conference center, the King George Conference Center, right on the side of it, which meant that we could book um, a hotel on the day of, a hotel room on the day of the event to so then sleep overnight because again, there's a lot of unpacking after the end of the day and dismantling and getting rid of stuff. So it's just easier to just book a room. So when you're looking for a venue, ideally look for either somewhere that is close to a hotel or somewhere where it is a hotel in itself so that you can actually have just like a one room stay, like one night stay there. So it makes it easier rather than the back and forth of wherever you're going to get ready to then get to the kitchen party and stuff like that. Also think about where the men are gonna be because they need to be there and get there quickly when you need them to get there. <laughs> so luckily um, around New like Newbury Park, um, I have my older cousin who uh, lives around there. So they were all around like their house and all the men were there. And then that's where it became like a, all the men, all the uncles kind of just sit in one, one nice close enough space. They can eat, they can drink, and then when it's time, that's when they can come. So that's exactly what ended up happening. So yeah, that's something else to be able to consider in terms of like the venue, the space, not just the venue where you're going to have the kitchen party, where the men are gonna be so that it's not too far, so they're not stuck in traffic or anything like that. It's easy for them to be able to get to where they need to get to. Let's talk food, guys. Hey! guys food is expensive okay food is expensive there was one um, caterer a quote that we got um she's a zambian woman bless her she did another one of our kitchen um she did another one of the kitchen parties that i attended um I, back in 2019 i feel like you know people know each other and stuff like that but she still quoted 5k for food guys five thousand pounds for food and um, basically i think we broke down like the full menu of everything that we wanted so that's probably where we didn't help in that or we thought that she would be able to do everything i honestly i get the quote of five thousand, but it didn't make sense 
because I also delegated like food and drinks to the senior committee in terms of you guys, you lot know what food we'll need and stuff like that. You lot sort it out. So it, it wasn't making sense. So that's when it was like, oh, we can't outsource this all. Um, and so we broke down like what the catering was going to be. Basically it was auntie make this, auntie make that. You know what I mean? Especially all like the traditional Zambian food, like people would be able to make those. And then we got a caterer who was then able to cover like certain things like the um, fruit salads, the fish, chicken, like all of those like one, two, two items rather than a full menu of what we had because we had a full list of like, I think we had like two or three different ri types of rice. We had the jollof rice, um, plain rice for people that didn't want spice in their rice. Um, I feel like there was one other type of rice maybe because I didn't really see the food too much like I just about ate a carrot and a bit of chicken because I my stomach was unsettling I was ready to get this thing done and dusted so after my mimosas my two glasses of mimosas while I was getting my, my uh, makeup ready that's all I had to eat <laughs> but it was nice the food was really nice and I missed out on the beans I'm so upset people were saying the beans were so nice. I'm like, oh, I missed out on the beans. Um, so catering, I would say first have a look at who's in your senior committee, who's able to do what food, what they can cover. And then what you can do is just cover how much it is for whatever you want them to make so that, you know, you can get the meats, the veg, the rice, the, you know, the big, big um, packets of rice so that people can just cook them and then it's ready and in, in there because i think with their chicken they did like bride um bride style so my cousin who was around the corner of their house they were basically the men were brying the whole day <laughs> we had them on the bride doing the chicken and um other meats that they had or whatever um so yeah it's very important because catering can be very expensive like especially if you don't want to break the bank for your kitchen party you will want to be able to get people around you together to make the majority of the food and then maybe use a caterer for some of the things that people won't be able to cover and then also outsourcing the things that you need to put the food in like the um, chafing dishes all of that stuff it all adds up guys it all adds up it's all a bit mad but that 5k for caterer <laughs> sorry we did we didn't have it we did have it <laughs> When that was pretty much the budget, we went over the budget, but when that was pretty much the budget, you would now want 5k just for food. Ah, I said, even if, even if I was going to cook myself the night before, I would manage. I would manage. It would be okay because <laughs> we ain't got it. We ain't got it. <laughs> desserts as well, like dessert. We had a dessert table and for desserts, my girl treats by Charlie. She does the best cakes and cupcakes, um, but we also did want a mixture of desserts. So we um, got Charlie to do the cupcakes and I didn't want like a big cake for the kitchen party. So we skipped out on that. And then we had another auntie, I think Auntie Marjorie, did some other cakes and stuff like that. But again, I didn't see the dessert table. Something else to be able to consider, as well as, well as the food, like sweet treats for everybody and stuff like that. When it came to photography and videography, of course, like the no other than Ben and Cobia, right? If you don't know, get to know Ben, yeah? Because this, this, this guy, <laughs> Hey, and Ben, I know yesterday's price is not today's price. <laughs> the way you put things together to me is what makes you an extraordinary videographer. Like, I couldn't, I've watched, I've watched the videos, both the kitchen party and the um, wedding videos so many times and the transitions and the cuts and the music breaks and the between we're talking here and then the highlights here like you just do what you do you just do what you do so kudos to you man because ben ah um yeah so that was my um videographer for the kitchen party so it's very important to get one that will capture the day the way you want it to and i knew that he would be the person to do that uh, I also told them that the focus for me on the day was to tell the story of the kitchen party throughout the day. So video for me was going to be more important than photography. Um, so that's what he focused on. It came about perfectly. So he had an assistant doing the photography part and for some moments he would switch between videography and photography. And then also if you've got other people that are into photography or videography on the day, 
you want to capture as much from all different angles as possible. So I had another one of um, my friends, Stella. I didn't even know she brought her camera, but bless her. Like she gave us so many pictures. It was like, Stella, this is amazing, thank you. So yeah, that was really nice. So we essentially ended up having two photographers on the day, which I didn't even think about because she did it for free. And then um, Ben's assistant who did the photography and then he did the videography throughout the day. And also manage time for your vendors because how you start off and if you're gonna be delayed, that affects everything, like that affects everything and we held up Ben because we had him for a certain amount of time and then bless him he still stayed and he still managed to get everything that we needed on the day so thank you so much Ben you did an absolutely amazing job let's talk DJs now yeah because me and music is very important you have to get the music right on the day yeah you have to get people involved and entertained and they have to hear the right type of music. And I'm so sorry, I didn't want the Uncle DJs. <laughs> the Uncle DJs are really good, they're really amazing, but I feel like I needed a mixture of someone who knew the right type of Zambian music to play, the right type of traditional music to play, and the right type of like, modern music to play. And obviously like the, in the mixtures like Afro beats, Zambian music, Z beats, um, the traditional stuff. So I needed someone to be able to mix that well. Ha! Huh. I found out about DJ Pandora, yeah? At um, of the virtual Zambian dependence last year, like 2020. I saw him play. I said, that's my DJ. I see, that's, I knew, I knew who was going to be my DJ. So I already had in my mind picked certain people to be like yep you're doing this you're doing this you're always going to do this in my mind I just knew even before the kitchen party planning process started so when um I asked um DJ Pandora if he's available he said yeah again it was going to be the whole day I said come on down and he's not even based in London he's in Cardiff so this is how serious I was about this guy. I said, I'll pay you what you need to be paid. Calm down, do my kitchen party, please. And then I was so surprised because DJ Pandora does not travel light, yeah? He comes with his whole set. He built his whole set and he set it there. I said, I knew my guy. Ah, again. Thank you, yeah? You did it, you did it. So when it comes to like music, obviously I knew that I needed a Zambian DJ for a, kitchen, a Zambian kitchen party. It didn't make sense for me to pick anybody else it had to he had to be Zambian so the fact that DJ Pandora came through I was I was really happy about that so yeah when thinking about getting DJs think about the type of music that they play have you heard them play before that's very important and the type of music that they played before very important kitchen party coordinators now yeah <clears throat> these are people that you basically assign to be heads of what they need to do. I was working very closely right from the beginning with one of my uh, friends. She's also Zambian and she has planned a kitchen party or been involved in planning a kitchen party before. So remember the 2018 kitchen party that I attended? So that was Lotus Kitchen Party and it's her older sister Chipapa that helped me with with like the kitchen party stuff basically like i was leaning on her a lot i'm like this is what we need to do this is what we need to do da, da, da. i was writing it down so like, okay go go get this have you done this have you done that so she essentially became my event planner for my kitchen party and um, my wedding and she does also also run a professional event planning service um it's called elevated by her on instagram if you haven't already check that out she's absolutely amazing like it just helps to lean on people that are skilled in like the area that they are in and are passionate about so it wasn't work for her well chip it probably became work after a while um but yeah so it kind of was something that she was really helping me um, out with, which I really appreciated, you know, from her, cause there was a lot going on as well. So yeah, thank you so much for that. So she was like overall looking after us as the junior, like the junior committee, and then helping me with like things that checkpoints of what I needed to do, connecting me with like um, the decor people, cause she also did some of the decor, but coordinated with them to be able to set up on the day of the event, stuff like that. So you need like your kitchen party coordinators. You've got your committee, but now within that, who are your coordinators? Who's responsible for say, 
okay, if this group are doing the food, who is the head of that? So to make sure that that's being managed properly and stuff like that. I had my other friend Tio, who was the head of program. So she made sure that, you know, the final program was decided between the matron and the DJ, like that had to, the music had to match. And then, you know, the order of things. I had to delegate at this point because I was like, take this off my chest. Like I, I can't, like do everything myself so she did that and then my best friend Susan um she was responsible for the gifting so all of the baskets that um we did so um, me and uh, Josie's baskets and then the mother's baskets essentially that we gifted to our sisters Susan put all of those together she went out got all the things that we said we would like to include in the baskets she put in there and did the wrapping and all of that so you can delegate these things like you don't have to do things all on your own but then every, everybody comes together Cynthia was the head security yeah Cynthia was the hostess at the door so that's another thing to consider is somebody who you need at the door welcoming people and as well as that collecting the cards because that's another thing about Zambian kitchen parties is that you kind of set a minimum of a contribution that you would like people to bring with them to the kitchen party so you know you can set any number that you want for how much you want them to bring like your guests basically your guests to bring and so she was in charge of that so you have like a box at the front and then that's where people can pop in their cards with the monetary gift that they will bring um with them that are contributing to you and your house so she was the head of that she was just like i'm going to take care of you i'll make sure and all that kind of stuff as well as that like there's some people that choose at a kitchen party to check what the monetary value is and if it matches and then they kind of tell people no that's not enough but we didn't want that man we just wanted people to come enjoy bring whatever you can and like guys it's been a hard time in the pandemic in it we can't now be doing if you don't have this amount you can't come in like let's just all enjoy and have fun um so yeah i just asked that people bring something and you know let's not check the card just pop it in there whatever they brought they brought even if they didn't bring anything it was fine they were still there to bless us on the day so that worked out perfectly. So shout out to you guys for helping me so much with a lot of the kitchen party stuff because I know it was a lot of work. <laughs> I know it was a lot of work. And then other things obviously think about is more like the stuff for you as a bride, right? Who's doing your makeup, um, your dress, who's doing your hair and all of that stuff. So my makeup was done by MUA Mina Hamor. So Mina, I know through my friend that I mentioned that um, where we went to the tr traditional wedding. Um, so she has used her for her makeup and she also did my engagement um, makeup. So I was just like, yeah, you can cover me for the traditional as well. And she did a good job with that. So that was um, Mina. Yeah, and then for my hair, I used my good, good friend, Tasha. You guys know her from the silk press video that I did. So remember when I got a trim and a silk press? That was Tasha, my hair bar London. So she came through with my hair look. She put it all together. We kind of like shared an idea of what I had in my mind and she wanted to add as much texture and like feel to the bun that um, ended up having. So yeah, I was so happy with how it came out as well. Um, I had a freak out moment though at some point because my edges wouldn't edge. Like I had so many flyaways because I'd been sweating after I left her salon to come to the venue and after I got my makeup done, got shower, my hair started frizzing up again and I started to panic. I was like, oh, and I was literally about to take everything off. but. Susan, bless you, thank you, you calm me down. <laughs> That's what best friends are for. <laughs> because I would have been freaking out and then I would have been stuck with me not having any hair and anything to do with it. And then, yeah, we were running out of time as well, so that wasn't um, great. My dress, that saga, will be the next video. <laughs> Basically, find a tailor you have used before, a trusted tailor. My tailor, the one that did my um, my dress, for the lace dress in the traditional wedding, she was living her best life in Turkey or wherever she was, yeah? She was unavailable. So I had no tailor because it was also short notice. Okay? So then I had to like look for tailors or whatever, got a recommendation, I went, things didn't work out. So then the Wednesday, I then went, who can do this? God answers prayers and things that are meant to be will be because I have my dress on Saturday. <laughs> 
guys that story will be coming but the one thing that i will say is making your dress plan it as early as possible and find that tailor that will be available that you trust to make your dress because otherwise like going off of a whim and you know someone that you know should be doing a good job and they don't end up doing a good job ah no no so yeah think about that um for the groom for my husband Adizia, he went to looks like a good man they make absolutely amazing like traditional stuff i mean did you see what these guys rock down with did you see it because head to toe even the hats and then even the slipper that my husband wore even the slipper that was made personal customized I said, you lot really tried, you know. I had never seen this before. The level of effort the guys came with, unmatched. Unmatched. They did the job. They did it, absolutely, and did it well. I'm so proud of them. Yeah, and then other things to consider are like, you know, things that are going to gonna go on the table. So like all your decor stuff. So like I said, I work with um, Chip and her company, Elevated by Her with that. And then she also partnered with other um, vendors for decor to bring it all together. The set was, hey, Chip, you did, you did it. Like, you know what I mean? Like you did it. Like I envisioned that, that flower wall, but then with the traditional aspects of it kind of the giving the feel of like you want to be home but with a kind of like a little bit of elegance and seasoning on top you know <laughs> all of that stuff so it's kind of like a mixture of it um i would have wanted like like a proper seat but these people really wanted to go real traditional and chip was like no nah, they're telling me that you really have to sit down on the floor i said We'll sit down on the floor, it's okay. Um, but it's always your preference, right? So wh however, like, you want to be able to decide what the decor looks like, what you're sitting on, all of that kind of stuff. I would say, like, just make it so that you're comfortable as possible. Because on that cushion thing that we got, my back was just... And they had to bring pillows for me. So, like, have somebody test out where you're going to be sitting so that it's not too uncomfortable. Because we literally did things last minute and we brought it in last minute. And it's deciding how it's going to look more than how comfortable everyone's going to be. And you're sitting down for a long time as well. And then other general tips I would give for preparing for your kitchen party. You're in the day or the kitchen party. Is like you don't want to drink too much to where like you interrupt things that are going on in the middle of it so they even tell you like don't drink too much so I literally like I said had my two mimosas in the morning <laughs> and then I stopped and I think I had some I don't even think I ate that day no I definitely had breakfast I definitely had like prep when I because I went to go and get my hair done early in the morning then went to the venue and then you know I got an early check-in at the hotel so I could put my stuff down and stuff and then have um Mina come and do my um my makeup on the day there are just some things that you just need to prepare for it's like make sure you don't drink too much um you can eat if you can try and eat me um uh, when i get nervous i need to use the bathroom <laughs> so eating was not gonna be my friend you know um yeah just plan things early like as well like getting your makeup done early getting your hair done early so that on the day of the event, like on the day, everything flows, even though it didn't end up flowing the way I imagined it would flow. Because again, we were waiting for a crowd. So I was just like, why aren't we starting yet? Da -da 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 -da. People need to eat. Da -da -da -da. I was worried about these things and people were like, no, just calm down, like steady, calm down, chill out. All will be well. So yeah, and everything came together, which was really good. That's all I have in terms of like talking all things kitchen party planning and the things to be able to um, consider and all of that. Like all the other stuff is like jewelry and what you're wearing and all of that kind of stuff. But everything can be sourced depending on obviously if you're fusing cultures. So you saw that I had like um, a dress change. Um, so I like sourced my gele and the jewelry from um, Liverpool Street and then I ordered my dress because I was like I don't have time to even start looking for lace to start sewing lace and someone's going to charge me x again so I just ordered from um, Matope best store if you just need something quick and that was the bling and it was sequin lovely <laughs> um, yeah so that was like the second outfit change there and 
I think that is all. I hope I haven't missed anything. If I've missed anything or, you know, people have anything else to add to like the planning process and all of that, please share down below because that would be really, really helpful for anybody else that is referencing this video if they're thinking about doing a kitchen party in the future. Um, and guys, feel free to reach out to any of the vendors that I've mentioned. Um, I will list everybody that I used in the description below as well. So you guys have like direct links to them so that you can check out their work, see what they do um, and all of that because like it will be so helpful for everybody. Like I hope it will be so helpful for somebody then moving forward because like we had to pretty much put things together ourselves. And I feel like, you know what? each one help one like now we've done it we've got the information that we need so if somebody out there is planning a party here in the uk like don't be afraid to reach out to me i'll be more than happy to like give you some advice but in the meantime i hope this video has been really helpful just to give you an understanding of a what a kitchen party is because i just threw out that video and then assuming that people know well obviously if you watch the video then you get the just an idea of what it's all about and also how you go about planning it and bringing it all together and making the day extra special for everybody, which is pretty cool and awesome. <laughs> so thank you for watching this video. It's probably longer than I intended to just because I like to chat, 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 chat. And sometimes I shall shut my mouth. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you're still here watching with me at the end of this video, love you loads. Thank you so much and speak to you guys soon. All right. Bye. <laughs>